Um, I'll just quickly talk about uh, when this uh, when the product was built for uh, NGO called Soul City Institute in South Africa. They work uh, mainly with domestic violence uh, victims. So uh, I'm Billy. I'm actually from the UK. So this is great. Like you know, the online event I could you know, participate uh, across the pond and super excited to meet everyone. Um, I'm a data scientist at AI for Good UK, which is a really small startup. We are uh, five people strong. And lately I've been working on some of the epidemiology modeling stuff to support uh, NGOs that work in refugee camps or work out of refugee camps that have an interest in there. Um, and then I saw Jay's uh, values, super, super, super cool. We already made a screenshot and we'll, 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 we'll use that. Um, and so a little bit background about what this chapel is. The chapel is called Rainbow. Uh, we uh, had a research phase prior to the launch. So the Rainbow was launched at the end of uh, 2018. And about six months before that, we sat down with our NGO partner to do research, um, interviewing different uh, domestic violence victims to find out, you know, what, what kind of support they wish they had um, to begin with. And then um, interesting thing emerged from those conversations where we find out um, the sort of the literacy um, around domestic violence in terms of, you know, people don't really talk about domestic violence um, more generally because there's shame in culture and all of that. And we found out actually people don't, a lot, of, a lot of people don't really know what's a sign for domestic violence. So initially we wanted to build something that can support domestic violence uh, victims. And then we quickly realized maybe we can be more complementary to all the services that already serve these um, victims to start with. Uh, to raise awareness of the violence, really to tell people, you know, if they feel, if you don't feel right in the relationship, what does that mean? And uh, how, how do they know what constitutes domestic violence? So a bit of background in South Africa, I think according to WHO stats, one in three women in their lifetime will experience domestic violence or gender-based violence. So very, very important issue there. And this is the to the wireframe or like picture you can see from, from our chatbot. The chatbot is wired up in a way you have several modules you have used a uh, wool bot or whatever bot like that, that that's out there is, is very similar. Then you have modular design, you have different stories of like um, domestic violence victims uh, telling their own stories or like different uh, sections on like what kind of sign is domestic violence. And then we won a bunch of words like uh, along the way as we develop the technology. I'll just point out a few learnings and a few open sort of NLP challenges that we have with this chapel at the moment. So, um, learning point number one is you actually don't need to have a complicated NLU and NLP backend to really attract users and really engage users. What we find out is user experience and user design can help hide the flaws, as you can say, but actually they, I think they are the main part of um, the, the chatbot. Like, as you can imagine, like, um, you know, generation, text generation, all this stuff is not really ready yet. Now, uh, so we work with a designer who has been uh, writing film scripts and all that. So it could really, really, really build a per, like a really good persona of the chatbot, and then like the level of tone and all that stuff was novel to me before starting on this uh, on on this project. I was like, oh, how, that's how you do conversation design. That's very, very important, and that's fascinating. And the user research that we did, I mentioned before before developing any of the code, um, you know, was very important to really understand working with the NGO partner. You know, to really understand the problem, really understand like how we can help as we're not there to take over any of the services that are already existing. We're just trying to uh, complement them and then uh, empower the frontline uh, workers. And some of the NLP challenges that still exist now. So like, um, first off, we launched this as an English chatbot that's on Facebook Messenger. And English is still like sort of second, third, fourth language for a lot of South Africans. So uses English proficiency leads to a whole range of grammatical and spelling mistakes. And, and to some extent, having enough data sort of helps because you can then spot some local spelling patterns where like people use uh, their own shorthands, but as you have thousands, thousands of users, their shorthands tend to like converge and bucket altogether. And then we found having a graph-based approach and clustering uh, complements, complements the topic modeling you would normally do with uh, word embeddings to find out uh, different topics, especially we're quite interested in the outliers of the topics. For example, we found out some of the topics that we're talking about regarding uh, legal help, uh, immigration laws uh, on, you know, if my part, if I depend on my partner to stay in the country and what does that, what does that entail if a domestic violence incident happened? Um, so 
that was one part of it. And the second part is doing really some text classification um, with limited content, still still quite hard. So in our chatbot, you know, most of it is kind of wired up, uh, and then you have you can freely exchange text with the with the chatbot. But usually, when you want to do any sort of sentiment, sort of intent or risk score of like being a domestic violence message or not. Um, from a single exchange, it's still quite hard, and context windows tend to vary. Sometimes you have three or four exchanges with the person. Sometimes you only have one or two, and then it's really hard to like really tag the data that way. And then we have a ton of problem tagging. So if anyone knows any, any like have worked in similar scenarios, please get in touch. I'm curious to hear. And then we were working with a group of researchers in Australia who has done some um, sort of classification of domestic violence messages in Facebook group. And, and then we reapply that algorithm to our data. It doesn't work as well as you can imagine. Our, our data, you know, um, the users tend to really trust the chatbot, really share something deep and personal, rather than the Facebook messages you see some, someone sharing a third person story or just talk about domestic violence in general. The text um, is quite uh, different. Um, and the our bot is live in this link and then we are, on the sort of uh, sort of iteration where we're building the NLP engine, all that stuff. So welcome any feedback, please please check it out. And I know uh, sort of domestic violence and COVID nineteen has a has a very 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 dangerous relationship there, where a lot of people stay at home. And then we are like doing some work over there. So if you're interested in that, we welcome any collaborators in that domain as well. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And also we have a quick question from an audience asking, how do you evaluate? whether this chatbot is providing valuable information or valuable. Yeah, so we, we kind of assess it in the user research where we have the end user to user in front of us, uh, run focus group and all that. And then the other way is to, we also collect feedback in some of the, some of the pathway we're building the chatbot. So user can text them, uh, to, can provide feedback that way. And then the feedback we have seen so far are quite positive. And then people do say they thank um, a lot of messages that they then thanking the bot for telling them, for sharing the story, they feel empowered. Um, so I guess in a way, qualitative research and also qualitative anecdotal evidences from, from the bot. Cool. Thank you very much.